Hello. So here's the thing. I have another programming video for you here. So this time I'm going to be showing off um, the first official release of what I call the Chastity Checkerboard. And you'll, you'll see what, I, what, I, what I've been working on. And there's a lot of work that still needs to be done on it. I mean, it's fully functional, but there are just minor improvements I think I want to add and make. But it's pretty much complete. So anyway... I'm going to switch to display capture and I'm going to show you what I've got here. I've got my Princess Rosalina image right there and what I have here is this is the folder with my first uh, official release here. So what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you that you, you can run this program inside a Windows command prompt this is the standard Windows command prompt anybody who has any version of Windows can use this um, so it's on pretty much on every Windows computer ever since like Windows 95 though I don't know if my program works on Windows 95 but it should work on most modern versions of Windows so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change directory to the folder containing that file. So here I have the these files here. Now I'm going to show you something. Okay, now this is interesting. Yeah, cat doesn't do anything on here, but type does. If I do type chastity checker manual.txt. Oops. You have to put quotes if the title has spaces. I forgot that little detail. Yeah, and then it shows, I mean, my documentation or my little manual I wrote for how to use my program is so tiny it fits in only a few lines there. But for convenience, I'm going to show, show you something. Now, okay, now I'm going to clear the screen with CLS. Okay, now if I just type checker, the name of the program, then it shows me a checkerboard, obviously. However, my program can do more than just display this checkerboard. Here's what's the beauty of my program. I can change every little detail and I'm just gonna demonstrate. So, I can do this from memory because I wrote it, I know how it works. So, checker, and if I, if I do 100 and 200 as command line arguments, it, oops, it fails. I don't know why it fails with those dimensions. That's a little mysterious. I may have to work that bug out. Okay, um, however, I'm gonna, I'll show you something. I'm gonna exit out of that program and I'm gonna show you that although the program uh, d failed to display it on the screen, I have two bitmap files in this folder. And look, if you look at the dimensions, it's 100 by 200 pixels. So these images are right. Now, the only difference between these two files, because they are identical, is that they have different file sizes. And there's a reason for that. One is stored in the 1 bit per pixel format. The other is the 24-bit um, um, per pixel. So there's... In most cases, the smaller file is the only one you need, but it shows you stuff. So, but I'm good. I can do all kinds of things. So let's say that if I change the, these both to 1,000, what am I going to get? Yeah, it's too big to fit the whole thing on the screen. So let's choose a smaller value. In fact, I can put the numbers in hexadecimal. This is where it gets cool. So I have OX for I'm starting hexadecimal 200 and then OX200 and what does it do? It displays a um, it displays a checkerboard here that is 200 um, base, yeah it's 200 uh, I mean 512 I can't talk right uh, pixels in both width and height but and it will also tell me that if I look at the the file here it will tell me this see it says 512 by 512 and it will even tell you that if you go into properties and look at the details and notice it says bit depth of one like I said it's one bit per pixel so anyway 
So that is my, yeah, that is, shows that it creates these things. But now I'm going to show you, you, you see it not only displays in the window, but it shows it um, in the file if you open the file. But you can do more. So now take a look here. This is the standard checkerboard. And, but that is at 32 bits per pixel. If I change it to 16, see what it does? It makes them smaller. And that's because the standard uh, width of the pixel is 32. So by default, my program does black and white checkerboard of 32. And it's default, um, yeah, so if I just type checker, I'm going to show you something. There is the standard size of it. Now, I like that size, but what is the actual dimensions? It will show right here. It's 1280 by 720. And that is because that is the YouTube standard um, re resolution for videos. So I chose that dimensions to be the default of my program. Anyway, enough minor details that people don't care about. Not that anybody cares about my checkerboard program in the first place. But I'm going to um, I'm going to show you that I can do a lot more. So besides the fact that I can change the square size to anything, I can do much more than that. Here's where it gets really freaky. If I start putting in color values um, here, there is the color value for red as the fourth argument. The black squares have been changed to red. I, I kid you not, you can change the colors just by putting the right command line arguments. And I mentioned all this in the little manual I wrote, which you can download. I can provide the link if anybody cares. Anyway, um, and then if I put one more argument after that, let's say that I want to make the next one blue. Yep, red and blue. I can do all these amazing things. But I, just by changing the numbers ever so slightly, I can do all these different things. So I can change everything. And But here's the thing, it, is it doesn't actually read anything after, any command line arguments after that. So, so I could do stuff like, what, what is love? And it doesn't have a clue what that is because it ignores all command line arguments after the two color values. So these arguments have to be given in this specific order. So for example, so what we have here is we have red and green. But what if I want to make it orange and green? That can actually be done, believe it or not. Um, and the reason orange and green is because my friend Rose likes orange and green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the red value into orange. And what I do is I change the green value slightly and it makes it orange and green. That's very interesting, but I can do, I can do everything. So for example, I can do, make it orange and black or I can, I can do it something like, um, let's change this back to green and we've got black and green so as you see there is no color that you can't do you can do any 24-bit color value here and it displays in both bitmap files regardless because I can figure it to be that way so anyway so just as an, as an example let's say that we want yellow and blue so let's have yellow red plus green is yellow and then let's have blue over here isn't that beautiful and let's say I want to make it a little bit bigger let's say that I want something like wait not that's too big okay if I do this see how that is that is actually pretty nice isn't it so yeah so we have a blue and yellow but I think what I want to do is I want to go back to the orange and green. So yeah, I can do orange and green just by changing these numbers. And so that's the thing is, let's say we have orange and green. So then all I have to do is look at this bitmap file it produced. And yep, it's orange and green just as it displayed on the screen. 
And once you have an image file, then no problem. You can share it to Facebook as I'm about to actually do right now. I'm just going to go to Facebook and show you that you can actually upload these bitmap files in case nobody believes me. Obviously, they display fine on my computer. And I have the Image Glass um, Image Viewer installed because I found it to be a very helpful image viewer. Um, it supports a lot of formats. It takes my browser a really long time to load. But yeah, basically that's the thing is that yeah, okay, well that's strange. It takes my browser a long time to load. You know what? Forget that. Um, I think um, I'm just what I'm just gonna say here is I'm pretty sure that all the checkerboards that I've uploaded to Facebook recently proved that it does indeed work to upload the bitmap files and it takes forever for my browser to load probably because I'm recording a video and because my old computer is crap but it still works for my programming because you can do programming on old DOS computers that didn't even have a hard drive and only ran floppy disks so you can do programming on a really crappy computer even if you can't get your web browser to open anyway that's my little programming uh, demo there my checkerboard program is available for download and I later may put the link in the description. Just comment and let me know if you're interested in information on where you can download this because I highly doubt anybody cares, but if they do, then I'll just edit and add the link.